Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Petr Sokening. I am a whale bones head of a segment of uh, providing our services to ISPs and CSPs. And I'm here today with uh, Robert Schaeffer, our CTO. And uh, this presentation, this uh, webinar is uh, focused on presenting you new, new features of Whalebone uh, Peacemaker that uh, has uh, been uh, released for you in the last couple of months, actually, uh, from the last webinar, uh, that was in April, if I'm not mistaken. We have plenty of uh, technical and uh, product news. So uh, mainly it will be today about the Roberts. Uh, presenting uh, his, uh, his uh, part uh, focusing on technical stuff. And I have a few announcements on the very beginning. And as you have already seen from the, uh, from the webinar name, uh, Bone Peacemaker, uh, we have a new brand for Whalebone ISP. And I will shortly uh, describe it. And we have also a new business address uh, but before uh, going to this uh, brief business update, I want to ask you, uh, feel free to ask your questions every time. Uh, you can write uh, them in the chat, as you have uh, already noticed, it's possible to write there. And uh, thank you uh, for a greeting to everyone. And also feel free to raise your hand. There's an icon uh, in your, in your uh, management system of uh, this uh, webinar tool. And you can always raise your hand and uh, discuss with us directly if uh, you will need and wish. Uh, so let me start with the uh, new business address. Uh, that's just like a very short information. Uh, we have uh, moved to new office houses and uh, we have also officially changed the business address. So you will receive uh, invoices and official communication uh, with this address. So in the case uh, you are also doing uh, uh, invoicing in your network, please uh, take uh, care uh, and uh, please uh, check uh, it out if you have in your invoicing tool, uh, your new address, uh, new address uh, edit. But what is more interesting is that we have already uh, launched new website with new product names. And you can see uh, the screenshot of new website. And we are going today to talk about Whalebone Peacemaker. That's actually the uh, system, all of you, almost all of you, uh, except a couple of uh, guys from uh, one telco uh, here today uh, are using. And uh, Whalebone Peacemaker is a protective DNS deployed to wall network, uh, providing you the protection against, uh, against uh, the impact of malware uh, from your users' devices and from your infrastructure components uh, to your network. Uh, we have uh, two other products. Uh, one is Whalebone Aura. Uh, Whalebone Aura is uh, suitable for large uh, nationwide telco operators with at least uh, a couple of hundred of thousands of subscribers. And it's uh, for them not about the uh, wall network deployment, but about uh, some on-demand uh, service for their customers. Uh, and uh, they've uh, received Whalebone as a white label product and uh, they will uh, implement it and they will they are uh, selling it to their customers. And the Whalebone immunity is for enterprises, corporations, and public institutions. Uh, and uh, comparing to Whalebone Peacemaker is very, very similar, but it has other features that are more relevant for corporate, uh, corporate segment, such as uh, agent for end devices uh, and uh, some different, uh, different features uh, in the portal and so on. So we will talk about Whalebone Peacemaker and about the changes uh, we made uh, in the last, uh, last couple of months. And uh, that's the time when I'm going to ask Rob uh, to start his presentation. Uh, so Rob, uh, feel free to uh, join us and start uh, presenting what's new in Whalebone. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I will share my screen and I will share um, uh, one of the browser windows with the with the updates I would like to share with you. So, just give me uh, give me a second, and let's jump. Okay. It should be visible and okay by yes, now. It is. It is. Thanks. 
this on the on the user interface on the administration level uh reworking most of the charts uh adding some so some new metrics and uh, some new behavior for uh, and, and filtering options for you so uh, hopefully this will uh, make your life uh, easier when looking for uh, a particular incident and looking for uh, some some um, non-standard behavior in the past uh, Basically, uh, these changes are uh, in the in the threads, in the thread overview, overview thread dashboard, and uh, uh, the DNS traffic. Uh, the behavior of those two dashboards is is very similar, so you can uh, you can use uh, the same approaches and processes in, in both of them. Uh, uh, well, uh, if we are looking on the uh, on the overview on on the thread, thread dashboard, there are several uh changes uh, first of all the timeline here uh we have uh added multiple different timelines uh the the main one uh is the same as it, it was before the actions timeline that shows you what uh have been blocked and uh, what has been only audited uh so this is the uh, probably uh, quite quite important one but if you want to have a different perspective and for example to uh, understand what are the most uh, what are the most frequent IP addresses here. Uh, you can use the client IP timeline here in the demo. Um, mostly, I will use the anonymized data, so that's why you are not seeing the IP addresses here, but only hashes. Uh, in your dashboards, you uh, you see directly the, the IP addresses IPv4, IPv6. So this is how you can actually easily get to the information. Uh, when some of the IP addresses uh, have been active and uh, the, the threats have been detected on those. So I can, for example, filter out this one particular, the green one, uh, clicking on that IP address, uh, the, uh, the filter will be populated here on the top and it will actually uh, redraw the whole dashboard, uh, anything, uh, anything on your dashboard, uh, all the charts, even the list, will be adjusted based on the uh, based on the filter if i'm not happy with the filter i can either remove it or i can disable it uh, so that i can enable it later on as well uh, or i can do the opposite uh, whenever i re enable it i can uh, i can do the uh, i can negate the uh, the filter and have included uh anything besides that particular ip address yes so, so i can basically exclude something from the uh from the dashboard if that's like too uh too spammy and if there's too many information of that particular ip address and i would like to focus on something else uh okay let me remove it uh, i will get to the to the other timelines there is a domain timeline uh telling me what are the most frequently uh blocked or uh let's let's have it in the blocked way so i will filter um, filter out the blocks and we'll get back to the domains timeline and these are the domains that are most frequently blocked uh, basically the top 10 i can see the uh, zansetom.com uh, which is a uh, which is actually a part of the or a domain used by the marys botnet and you can see it's uh, like 24/7 uh, blocked and um, visible on the, on the network. And there will be some similar dark generation team, uh, some some dynamic DNS uh, thread, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there are uh, some also also some others uh, not that frequent, maybe uh, like the unique ones. Uh, also, I can I can see the the categories timeline. What is the most now, what is the most usual category here is the malware. So, so it's it's pretty active here in the in this network, um, but also some some other uh, uh, some other incidents happening like you know, phishing, like earlier this week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if I want to have uh, a different uh, different time interval uh, for the analysis, I can either use the preset here uh, so the the default uh, now is is one week uh, 
uh, you can you can easily switch to to last day and to only focus on, on on the recent events you can but you can also have the the broader perspective two weeks one month or, or even more if you want using the calendar if you want to focus on a particular uh, on a particular time interval let me show you for example on the client ip timeline okay uh, this is uh, this is something of interest yeah there is uh, there is a, an awkward peak of some ip address and i would like to get to the uh, to the time detail here so i will just drag and drop with the mouse uh, around the time interval i will release the left mouse button and the the time interval will be automatically populated uh, to the filter so i can get to that particular event just uh, by dragging the mouse over the uh, the timeline charts it works on all of them so so you just drag and drop the mouse the left click and you get the the results uh, instantly okay and now i can see this was actually the ip address behind this was the culprit uh, operating from the uh, from the like a one hour in the evening uh, um, yesterday yeah, so let me filter that out and see what was the uh, what, what was the domain? Yeah, so so I can I can get really fast to those uh, to those results. If I, if I'm uh, not happy about the time interval selected, I can get easily back to the uh, last week like like this. Yeah, so this is one of the major cha change that we are really happy about that one uh, because it, it gives you the option to get really fast to to a particular time interval you are interested in or that just caught your eye in the on the chart. Uh, all right, uh, the other changes, and there is a new column of, of three different, there are two metrics and one and one uh, tech cloud here. I will get back to them. And uh, these three uh, charts, they are basically very similar to what have been uh, present before. Uh, we changed them to pie charts and we have, uh, we have added in these two in the domains and client ip we have also included the uh, the others category just to uh, to give you the idea uh, what how what is the volume of, of the other domains uh, besides the top 10 and what is the volume of other ip addresses as you can see here uh, quite quite a lot of ip addresses not included in the last uh, in this list is more than more than half so there is probably something to uh, to drill down but on the other hand in the domains most of them are actually uh, most of the top 10 they, they actually uh, uh, most of the incidents con uh, contains the one of the top 10 domains uh, on the right uh, there are two interesting metrics uh, number of unique client ip addresses uh, so so in this case it's more than 2000 client ip addresses uh, seen uh, connected to some sort of threat uh, during last seven days if i uh, if i filter out for example only the blocks it will be 1598 uh, a bit less so i can i can uh, in, in all cases thanks to the filters i can see okay how many ip addresses uh, have some uh, had some incident that uh, that has been blocked uh in the last seven days it will be it will be probably more in the in the two weeks uh okay so, so this will probably give me some idea how many hosts customers there are are infected or are having some issues uh, of course you have to take into account uh, the knowledge of your network how much uh, how, how dynamic the the ip address assignment is there in, in your network so so the actually uh, one ip address or sorry one cpe probably can emerge multiple times here in the overview if the ip address is changing over the time and the threat is still present uh, during the uh, during the time frame number of unique uh, domains again this is like almost um, almost 5000 uh, during the f uh, during the two weeks and again i can get more information how many uh, have been blocked that was some more than more than 2000 unique different domains uh, in the in the network in the tech cloud i'll remove the remove the filter in the tech cloud 
you are able to see uh, the names of particle threads or, or some details of those threads. It doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be uh, a particle name. For example, this one quite uh, quite frequent is it's it's a malicious HTML. So it's it, it's a script uh, or it's something hosted on the website which is considered malicious. So it's it's quite frequent. But uh, there are also other uh, different kinds. Uh, let me, for example, filter out the Krakonosh. Uh, Krakonosh is a malicious coin miner distributed to uh, to the uh, um, to the computers uh, and is mining uh, the, the the cryptocurrency for the owners. Uh, as you can see in this demo network, there are 33, 33 uh, unique uh, IP addresses uh, actually hosting uh, the Krakonosh and uh, 39 uh, unique domains uh, have been connected to the Krakonosh operations and, and all of those have been blocked. So if, if, I'm, if I go down there in the list, I can see, okay, these are the domains. Uh, that have been somehow tied to the Krakonosh operations and all the uh, all these events, all these requests uh, have been blocked. Uh, please feel free to uh, to post any questions. Uh, Peter is monitoring the chat and he will interrupt me anytime. So so if he, if anything is of interest, you would like to, to ask for more details, do it uh, anytime during the uh, the demo. Don't wait for the for the end. Uh, okay, uh, let me get uh, to the DNS traffic here, uh, which is, uh, as I've mentioned, it, it's it has been changed in in a similar fashion. So again, you are able to drag and drop to a particular time frame. I'm working with seven days here. Um, at the moment, but I, I can go. I can get to a particular time frame anytime. So let me just filter out uh, a, a few hours. And uh, hey, now we can see all the whole dashboard has been redrawn. I will get back to uh, to single day and show you a few a few things regarding the the timelines. So again, here the main uh, the default timeline is the timeline per query type. So as usual, the, the most uh, frequent, the most popular query type is the A. Uh, and uh, But you can easily look for, for any anomaly here. Uh, I can also have the differentiation uh, via client IPs. So mostly there are the others that don't fit the top 10, but for example, the most talkative IP address is this one, I can, I can filter it out. Just to see, uh, there are almost 2,000 uh, different second-level domains. Second-level domain means like Google.com, uh, and uh, I can I can look into into more details here, or I can get back, for example, to DNS request timeline and see what the uh, particle query types are there for for this IP address. Again, just, just a reminder, the IP address is anonymized. So, so we, we are only seeing the hash here, not, not the actual IP, but oh, you are all seeing the, the IP addresses. Uh, okay. And uh, second level domains, again, just to, see, uh, to see the top 10, uh, how, it, uh, how it looks like in the, uh, on the timeline. Google's indication, the most popular one, Akamai, H, Office, etc., etc., and the answers, which can be which can be interesting uh, in terms of let me maybe switch to seven days uh, with the answers. Uh, it it may be interesting if you see if you are seeing some spikes in the in the surf fail or or annex domains. Uh, it can be quite helpful. Uh, it can be quite helpful to get uh, to, to see the answers. So, so here, annex domains. Uh, I mean, it, it's a it's a regular uh, it, it's a regular uh, part of the DNS traffic on the internet. But uh, a spike can be of interest. The same applies to to surf fails. So, if, if there was if there are too many surf fails in a particular uh, in a particular hour, it can be of interest, and uh, you probably 
would like to understand what what happened there what were the domains for example or who who were the clients asking for those particular domains so this is again uh, an easy way how to how to get to that information uh, okay just to sum up uh, uh, the chart uh, again number of uh, unique client IP addresses visible for the time frame last one day it was more than 10,000 unique IP addresses and more or almost like 300,000 unique uh, second level domains quite quite a lot here and we have also added uh, the information about the uh, resolvers so uh, you can uh, you can easily distinguish what was the resolver that actually processed the particle traffic we all, i only have one in this demo uh, but if you have multiple resolvers you can see uh, what portion of traffic is hitting uh, what resolvers and if for example if that particular issue is only connected to one of the resolvers etc etc uh, okay, uh, da -da -da. I will get probably uh, back to these dashboards during the demo as well. Uh, however, uh, I will get to, uh, to, some, to some next parts uh, connected to the facelift. Uh, okay. Uh, let me let me show you first of all as, as some smaller things but uh, probably uh, convenient for you uh, in in the reporting if you are if you are using the reporting uh, the report settings if you have the report enabled you are uh, receiving a report to your mailbox or mailboxes based on the configuration but also we have been asked to provide a direct access to those reports as, the, as they are generated so the access is here you can download any quite even the older reports from the user interface so you don't have to dig, um, dig for them in your in your inbox so if you would like to compare what's happening in your network now and what was happening like months or maybe even like a year ago you can any, download the pdf here anytime uh besides besides this we have also uh, published uh, something called audit logs uh, it's available here under the user menu uh, the audit and the audit logs uh, basically they give you the information about anything that happened in the user interface uh, it includes you your colleagues it includes even our support so whenever uh, we do something based on your request, like, hey, can you please adjust configuration or something, or can you help us, uh, or can you check some data? Uh, it's, it's visible here. Uh, you can check it out. You can check out that Wellbone support adjusted the configuration or pushed uh, an update to the resolver. Uh, or you can check uh, who actually was it if it uh, if it was you and you just don't remember or if it was some of your colleagues and you can uh, filter some of the main uh, some of the main attributes there uh, all of the events are uh, are marked as read or write read meaning i'm opening the threads or i'm opening the dns traffic uh, i'm looking on the resolver details or something write means i'm changing the configuration i'm pushing something to resolver i'm actually changing the behavior yeah, so the write events probably are uh, of more interest there yeah, so so i can see i can see here in this demo account uh, that uh, one of the one of my colleagues have uh, successfully uh, logged in or logged out uh, that's something uh, better actually created a new resolver called resolver three but let me get there okay really it's here yeah so i can i can see it uh it's not it hasn't been installed we have it we have it here for the demo purposes just to just to show you how the un in uh, how the resolver that has not yet been installed uh, looks like so i can check okay it was better so can you, i can even go to uh, to some more details and uh, there are all the 
uh, all the meta attributes that all also can be, for example, used uh, with communication uh, with our support uh, just to uh, to check whether everything is okay. Um, I don't know whether the account hasn't been hacked or something like that. So, so we have we have all this. It's stored for uh, one year, so you can get quite a uh, quite a uh, quite a time back if you would like to check uh, anything. And it will also be shortly available via API uh, if you would like to, for example, download the events via API to, to some of your uh, systems. It will also be available. So this is how uh, uh, how you can get a grip on what's happening uh, under your account. Um, back to the threads. Uh, we have also added a thing that we were we were asked for for quite some time for that, and that's the context menu for the domain in the threads can be now used uh, for uh, some actions are there for for a longer time. I will I will just touch them briefly, but there is a new option uh, that the domain can be add to to allow list or to deny list directly here from the context menu. So uh if i if i think okay this domain is legitimate i don't want it to be black uh to be blocked uh and this particular domain actually it, it's on it's on denial list that's why there is no score or threat category or threat name this is on denial list but uh let me check another one i will uh take this domain dark generation team ddns.net and i will add it to the denial list since I have multiple lists here, it actually asks me to, to which one of those lists I want to, uh, to have it. Uh, the default one will, will work for me. So I'm adding that and, and that's it. Uh, okay. Uh, can, you, can you stay here for a while? Um, of course. We have a couple, couple of new customers here. So okay. I want to uh, mention explicitly the false positive reporting function here. I will. Uh, as uh, it is the function in the case uh, you have some suspicion something is uh, not uh, proper uh, blocking uh, correctly uh, is false positive feel free always to uh, use this uh, button uh, report it to us then you can uh, even uh, add it to a loud list uh, but in the case you will report it to us we will investigate it in the case it's uh, legitimate for blocking we will keep it blocking uh, and in the case uh, we will uh, find out it's a uh, false positive, we will uh, globally whitelist it or globally remove it from the uh, Fritz database so that uh, your report will also help other customers uh, to have this uh, domain uh, unblocked. Yeah, but in, with, in any sure. case, I mean, if it's urgent and the, 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 Always, the, proper, yeah. the, the proper way to have it allowed is to add, add this to allow list. Yeah, that's, exactly. it's, that, that's the first step. Uh, the the false positive uh, report is something that we will uh, we will reply in timely manner, but it can take a day uh, before we before we reply. So I, I mean, if you want to have something allowed immediately, use the allow list always. Uh, okay, Peter. Any, anything else you would like to add? No, thanks. Okay. Um, uh, and, and for, the, for for some for some of you maybe it, it also may be of interest that you can directly from from this context menu for example search google for that uh, for that domain uh, and it will give you uh, it will probably give you some information how the domain probably is legit or not this one okay uh, there are there are like two uh, two results from the google with some uh, with some lists of URLs, most probably even like malicious or something. Yeah, so so this is definitely not a legitimate service uh, properly indexed by Google and, and no well known. And so so I mean there is a very low chance this is a false positive. Uh, okay, uh, let's get to uh, let's get to next stages. Uh, we have some, uh, some some changes on the local resolver and also on the cloud resolvers. I would like to uh, to, to go briefly uh, with you. And uh, one of the major ones 
actually I will use the resolvers here in the demo. One of the major ones uh, is that with, with the newest version of the resolver, and I will get to the resolver versioning, etc. later on as well. You are able in, in the policy assignment, you are able to change the, the policy matching strategy. What does that mean, the policy matching strategy? Uh, in the policy assignment here, you are able to tell the resolver that you would like to apply the default policy as a default to all the IP ranges. And uh, you would like to, in this case, have the policy schools assigned to these two IP ranges and, and this IP range will get the policy exception. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Whenever uh, a client uh, sends a query from, from this uh, IP range, it will, uh, the, the policy schools will be applied. Whenever this IP range is the source IP, the policy exception will be applied. Whenever any other source IP uh, is the source of the request, the default policy will be applied. Pretty clear. And this is what I, what I have described is the policy matching strategy uh, for client. If I switch it to the policy matching strategy resolver, the logic behind actually changes and uh, what we take as the uh, key for the decision is the destination IP of the request. If the request uh, has been sent to IP address uh, from, uh, for, for, for example, for this particular IP address, this particular policy will apply. How you can work with it, how we can use it, is that you will have a single resolver with multiple IP addresses and based on the configuration on the clients, uh, on the routers or on the, on the computers, the different policy will be applied. So, so you can then easily, uh, based on the DNS configuration of the router, you can distinguish between dif uh, different multiple policies on a single resolver. Like if I, if I will go to this IP address, it will only filter the security threats. And if I go to, the, to this IP address on the same machine, it will also probably apply some sort of content filtering. So this is how you can easily distinguish between multiple policies in, in a dynamic environment where you are not able to ensure that the clients will come from, from the same IP range all over and again, but you can uh, transfer this responsibility to the configuration of the CPE or of the, of the machines uh, on-premise uh, by, the, by the customers. So this is the, the policy matching strategy. You can switch it easily here and it completely changes how, how, this, uh, how this works. Yeah, so you just, just uh, remember that. Uh, okay, uh, this is one of the important things. And uh, other one, which is not probably visible here, uh, but, 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 but okay, uh, I can just share that with you. Uh, the resolvers, uh, the resolvers are getting updates for the for the malicious domains and for the content filtering database in a regular fashion. Uh, every few hours, the resolver will get an update, will download it and will apply it, which works quite well. You don't have to care about that. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything manually. Okay, it works. However, um, we have seen uh, and we understand that the, the timeliness of the data about the threats and about even about the content filtering, but the content filtering, that's, that's not like that time sensitive. Um, but the threats they are, if, if there is a malware campaign or phishing campaign running, you want to have the information on the resolver as soon as possible. So with the, with the newest version uh, released, uh, released in August, uh, you, are, uh, you are actually getting the updates for the threats and for the content categorization real time. Yeah. So, so still there is the mechanism that every few hours the whole database is updated. Uh, but there is also another service which is connected to our cloud and it is getting all the updates all the time. Actually, I believe it's something like uh, every few seconds or even every second that there is a, there is a new domain. So we are continuously processing new, 
new information and all this information is shared with your resolver which are getting it real time to have the threat coverage uh, as soon as possible again you don't have to do anything about it it just happens and we will probably we are now we are now evaluating the results um, if it works properly if it um, i don't know if it if it helps uh, to uh, to protect against newborn threats uh, really in a, in the timely manner if that happens we will probably uh, change the interval for the full database updates to something like daily uh, uh, so uh, it will also save uh, a bit of your bandwidth uh, so that you the resolvers are not downloading the whole package uh, every every few hours but only like once uh, a day during the night or, or something like this and this is this is the plan uh, so far uh, ever since the update uh, we, are, we are really happy about uh, we are not seeing any performance uh, impact we are not seeing any issues it, it works it works really smooth and we are happy with the with the results so far so so with the with the new updates we will probably uh, lower the uh, the uh, or uh, extend the interval uh, for for the updates of the full database however for you and, and for your customers it means you still have the full threat intelligence coverage it will just be faster and without downloading the, the whole database uh, every time so we will definitely continue on in in this on this and um, and uh, if you and this is also connected to and this is also connected to the to the updates um, what we have presented and what we have uh, you have also seen that in the release note release notes we gave you an option on the organization level here in the user menu and the organization settings but also on each uh, resolver level to follow either the latest or the steady release uh, strategy release branch what does that mean uh, whenever you are on the latest one uh, you will get the the new uh, the new releases with the new features they are properly tested we even test them in production on on multiple places and before the releasing them to the to the latest version so it's it's not it's not like a testing version it's it's really something that was running for a considerable time we are running them in our cloud we are running them in uh, at chosen customer uh, premises before releasing it to the latest version uh, whenever we are happy uh, they go to the latest version and you will get all the features available with the steady uh, with the steady version uh, you will uh, have less updates uh, and you won't get the newest features um, for example the the real-time threat intelligence update to the to the resolver is not part of the, of the study resolver now uh, some of the content filtering features are not part of the study uh, of the recent study release as well uh, but uh i mean in the steady version we are uh we are keeping the thing that has been running long time stable and reliable without any issues uh we are aware of etc cetera, etc cetera. so so it's it's more a conservative approach i would say oh, under this is something that whenever when you choose this on the organization level in the organization settings all the new resolvers will automatically be uh, installed under that particular branch either latest or steady on the resolver, le resolver level then you can choose in the upgrade in the upgrade track what you would like to have if you would like to have the latest or steady i have multiple multiple ones here those are available to me uh, and to some customers if they are uh, for example testing something or uh, um, yeah, if they are uh, asking for uh, some some changes that we are not we don't feel comfortable to release to all the customers, then we from time to time assign a new branch, a new track uh, that the particular customer can use. So, but um, 
the customers usually see the latest and the steady that they can uh, they can use. Uh, and that's it. Whenever, 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 then we uh, release an update to to that particular branch, latest or steady, you will see the the available upgrade here. There is no uh, upgrade available at the moment, but we are actually uh, preparing uh, an update for the, for the latest. And there are some minor uh, minor issues which we would like to to fix uh, and release and. Um, Actually, uh, the uh, the latest, the current latest, will probably make it to to the city quite soon because it's uh, we're really happy about that release. Uh, okay, so so that's it. Uh, just for your information, how does that work? Latest study that you can switch to to one of them if if you don't feel comfortable, or on the other hand, if you want to have the the most up to date product updates. Uh, Besides that, I have been mentioning the uh, the cloud resolver a few times, and we have we have a brand new cloud resolver. Uh, that means uh, we have the, the the old one. Uh, the old one still exists. I believe the release notes will be here. Yeah, there are. We have uh, we have published the information uh, recently. However, the cloud resolver. We are using it for more than half a year yeah, for, for, for particular projects, for particular customers. Uh, so it's not something that we just deployed at the moment. Uh, it, it's running for a considerable time. It's running on this IP address worldwide, meaning you will get to the closest, uh, to the closest cloud uh, resolver uh, using this IP address anywhere in the world you are, you are based. And we will be uh, we will be also adding a new new service uh, all the time based on the scaling and and the and the proximity requirements. These are the old IP addresses, and we will be shutting down the resolver, the old one, these two IP addresses at the end of o October. However, just to be clear, if you are using the local resolvers here, uh, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, these, these are completely independent. They don't have anything in, in common with the cloud. They don't use the cloud. So you are completely independent. This is just uh, for a few customers actually that are using the cloud resolvers. So, so just don't, uh, don't be afraid here with, with the local resolvers. You are not depending on that in, in any way and the change does not affect you. Um, uh, regarding the resolver, um, mo most of you, I believe, you are aware of, of us using the the NOT resolver as a base for the DNS resolution. Yeah, so we are extending that, uh, uh, and we are adding modules into the into the NOT resolver at the moment. Just to just to give you just to give you a notion, at the moment uh, the latest version is running on the five three two NOT resolver. We are happy about that, and the new release will be running on the four, five four one. Uh, we are running that again on on, on the cloud uh, at the moment, just to to verify uh, everyone is happy with that, and there are no there are no issues. There are, there are no major changes actually uh, in this version. Uh, some some fixes and some changes, mostly uh, mostly. Uh, connected to DNS over HTTPS, but still the DNS over HTTPS penetration is quite uh, uh, quite low. Some of our customers are using that, but still it's uh, it's something that uh, on the ISP level it's not getting that much attention. If you would like to to discuss that uh, the DOH deployment, uh, we are we are open to to that and we can we can help you. Uh, all right. So now to a, one of the bigger one of the bigger parts of the program of the agenda for today, and that is uh, and that is actually the content filtering, All right? So okay, this is where I have that prepared. Uh, let me show you two things. Uh, I'm not sure whether all of you are actually aware about the content filtering options here in the in Whalebone. So I will 
uh, I will briefly sum that up and some changes we have introduced. And then I will also get to the user interface to be released uh, soon. Uh, Peter, do you want to add something? I'm just uh, uh, I'm waiting for the right moment, but we have received <laughs> a question uh, with uh, the customer who has actually content filtering at on active uh -huh. uh, is not uh, possible to see content uh, filtering dashboard. Uh, <laughs> so the question will be uh, when is a, a release uh, plant uh, to happen? Uh, yeah. But I think you will uh, come to this point. I, I, will, I will. I'll come to this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so. Uh, the content filtering, uh, the content filtering um, uh, configuration here uh, actually gives you uh, the the option to uh, to deny an access to particular major categories or even the smaller ones. Recently, we have added uh, a few. Uh, so there is uh, in the crime in the crime section we have added the child abuse where we are partnering with uh, with world leading. Uh, uh, child protection organizations actually to to protect uh, the, to protect the children and that will uh, focus on denying access to domains that are uh, focused on on actually spreading the the, the child abuse mater material yeah so so this is one this is an important part uh, we will also edit uh peer-to-peer -peer, um, domains aiming mostly on the services uh from the from the bitrend world uh, we are we are aiming at bitrend trackers here yeah because we cannot see the the, the actual bitrend traffic but we can see the access to the to the torrent tracker uh, denying that and actually not not even not even um, allow the client to initiate the bitrend session and uh, the DOH, uh, which is a, a content category, uh, including the domains that are hosting uh, DNS over HTTPS servers. Uh, there may be, and we have some customers that, that uh, would like to, to use that to, to deny uh, access to third party uh, DNS over HTTPS servers. So you can, you can use this. It's quite a broad list of those uh, it definitely includes all of the major ones, all of the all of the famous one, the uh, famous ones, and even the the, the less famous ones. So you, you will probably uh, cover uh, most of the use cases here. Uh, and uh, as you have been, as you have seen, there is also an option. Let me show you, for example, on the social networks, there is this clock icon here. Whenever I enable uh, the Whenever I decide to block the social networks like this, when I check it, uh, the, I, the, the icon with the hours here, uh, with the clock here, uh, gives me an option to add a schedule where the category social networks should be allowed. Yeah, so I can tell, okay, so let's allow the, the social category, the social networks category from 10 to 11, basically like every day or Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know. And I can add multiple schedules when the content filtering should be should be off. This will be working uh, happily with the with the latest version of the uh, of the latest version of the resolver, uh, latest branch. Uh, as you can see, I have I have a multiple. This is our testing. This is our testing account. I have multiple resolvers here, even like the older versions. And the user interface tells me, "Hey, this policy. If you are using the if you are using the uh, schedule, this policy won't be uh, won't be possible to run on all the resolver resolvers because there are multiple resolvers using this policy. If I disable the social networks, uh, it will probably disappear uh, if if I save it. Yeah, so, so it's a uh, it will warn me uh, that some of the resolvers, if I have one of the resolvers on latest and one of the in, in steady, uh, it will warn me that uh, the policy will not be fully applied. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's it for the content filtering uh, changes here. And uh, let's get to the content filtering dashboard, right? Um, so 
Besides the threads and the DNS traffic here, which we have seen, we have also added a content filtering dashboard, which is not yet released. We are not 100% um, happy with the, with, with all, all the testing. So we are finishing this. Uh, on the other hand, there's not much left. So my, uh, we, I guess uh, it, it, it's a matter of weeks before we release it to the customers. Uh, and to you, so so to anyone, uh, to anyone uh, who has the content filtering add-on active and licensed, yeah, will it will be available? Uh, the content filtering will give you uh, the very similar, uh, very similar uh, experience, uh, meaning the categories timeline, client IPs timeline, domains timeline, uh, etc. So you will be able to see. Uh, who is uh, who is communicating? Who has been restricted? And because all those uh, all those events here are uh, the blocks. Yeah, the, there is no audit, or there is no uh, some, something similar as in the thread. This is actually what has been blocked uh, in 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 the traffic. You can actually see the IP addresses here because it's it's not the demo account; it's our internal account. But they are not that uh, they are not sensitive. Uh, and you can see that the actual domains uh, that are uh, that have been blocked for any particular reason. There are uh, there are ten different IP addresses only, uh, more than one hundred different domains. And what's interesting from the categories, you can see we have been uh, we have been playing a lot with the advertisement blocking, uh, also for our internal purposes for the office. Uh, it's it's quite fun uh, because uh, it really um helps you to get rid of the of the advertisement uh, on, on many places uh in your smartphone in your uh, on the web in the browser it works quite well uh also playing recently with the social networks uh of course you need for example you need the social networks still for the for the marketing team but again it, it works quite well and you will be also able to see the legal uh, the legal blocking here. Uh, if it's uh, if you apply the legal restrictions, it will be available here from the from the content filtering dashboard. Uh, actually, one more addition, maybe uh, important one. We are already processing the content filtering data for you. So whenever we release the dashboard, you will it will be directly populated with the, with the data. Yeah, so, so you won't have to wait for another few weeks before analyzing anything, but it will be populated directly. And uh, the same applies here. You can you can filter based on the categories. You can filter based on the IP addresses, resolvers, uh, anything, uh, and of course uh, based on the uh, on the time itself, uh, including the uh, including the selection. Yeah. So this is. Uh, what we are preparing for you, and uh, I believe it will it will give you more confidence with the uh, uh, with the content filtering feature and what what's actually happening there. What are the domains being blocked, and um, also an option to, for example, whitelist some of the domains if, if you don't feel like this one should be uh, should be blocked. Or uh, you can also I have seen. I've seen a uh, user interface issue, but uh, I will show it no matter what. Uh, in the domain analysis, uh, here on the right in the user menu, you can ask our system for uh, a domain to be uh, to be analyzed. Okay, uh, it went through. Uh, the issue of this demo account, sorry, and the resolvers are unavailable. So, so that's that's why there is so many unknowns, and that's why it took so long. It would be faster in your case. But YouTube.com, or whenever I analyze it, I see zero threads, of course. Uh, in the in this uh, in this our internal testing account, there is also zero traffic. But I can see the content categorization. It's connected to the category audio video. I mean, okay, YouTube.com that applies pretty well. But in case you wouldn't be happy about the categorization, you can request a change and you can tell us, hey, it's not audio video, it's more like games or something. And you can send it uh, you can send it back to us. 
it will it will end up in the same process as the false positive um, check and, and categorization. So someone will look at it and will tell, okay, this makes sense. Let's let's change the categorization, and you you will get a response. Uh, okay, thanks for the thanks for the suggestion. We are changing that. Or no, uh, sorry, we, we will keep it to this category because and and some some reason. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is to the content categorization to re uh, requesting the changes and the, the actual UI glitch here is there is a comment which is invisible and these cards are somehow somehow awkward. I've already listed an issue with the development, so it will be fixed fixed soon. And last but not least, uh, there are some let's say detailed minor things on the resolver uh, configuration. In the advanced configuration, you can get to the so-called expert settings where we will be from time to time adding some new some new things. And they are really edge cases. They are uh, not frequently used, but I just wanted you to know about those. You can disable the whole DNS logging. I don't know what would be the, the case, but you can do it if, if, you, if you feel you don't want to have the DNS logs. Uh, you can adjust the log rotation size. Uh, our default is one one gigabyte. So after after one gigabyte, the, the logs are rotated. If you feel it's like too large or too small, you can you can extend it or, or, or lower the, the the threshold. You can add syslog streaming, uh, so you can uh, send uh, the uh, you can add you can send the uh, the syslog to some external server uh, via UDP, and you can choose which log you would like to, to have there. The available log includes the, the threads. Uh, passive DNS log uh, includes the, the DNS traffic, and the content log uh, includes the, the content related uh, blocking data. Yeah, so, so you can process the you can possibly process the uh, logs elsewhere if you want to. There can be multiple configurations if you would like to, to send some logs uh, to different systems. And you can also manually set up the resolver process count. Uh, our resolver starts automatically a number of processes based on the number of CPU cores you have available. So if you have a machine with four CPU cores, it will be four. Uh, resolver processes, which are uh, and the DNS traffic is balanced balanced between all those four four processes. If you, for any reason, want to have less or more processes, uh, you can do it here. You can just uh, enable this and tell us, okay, I want to have sixteen processes. It's actually a bad idea to have more processes than CPU cores, but in some cases, you may have a reason to to do that. Oh, or you can have less processes than CPU cores. For example, whenever your virtualization is overwhelmed and you don't think it's, it's, it's a good idea to have that many processes. So you can have, for example, only two processes on, on a four CPU core machine. And um, basically that's, uh, that's it for it. I have one more uh, comment here. We have uh, we have uh, SNMP support for resol resolver monitoring. It will be probably added to the to the expert settings as well. At the moment, we have to enable it uh, manually. So, if you would like to uh, to use SNMP uh, SNMP to monitor the resolvers uh, to, to catch some traps, etc., uh, get in touch with our support, and we can we can enable it. Uh, manually uh, and give you a documentation for the for the SNMP or what we support. So that is probably everything from the from the agenda for today. Thanks a lot for for your attention, and uh, I will definitely stay here for some time more to to answer any questions that may arise. Yeah, there is one question uh, regarding the uh, blocking page, custom page customization. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it is uh, fully uh, customizable. 
Uh, but can you please uh, demonstrate it uh, live uh, and especially uh, to show uh, in the source code uh, uh, that it's possible to for completely change the content as the question was asking specifically about changing the uh, changing the font color and uh, how to center the logo. Uh, I'm not sure if you will be able to show uh, it in the code as you are not in the coder. Uh, but yeah. uh, the answer is uh, take the code, give it to coder and uh, he or she will be able to. Uh, Let me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let, let me let me yeah, show it sure. briefly. Uh, I understand. I mean, the, the question is quite clear. Uh, I won't be able to to show it myself because uh, I'm I'm <laughs> really not experienced uh, with HTML. So uh, I would probably come up with a, a very bad result. However, you can have multiple locking pages here. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me create a new one. I will. Uh, remove it afterwards I call it webinar the blocking page domain means okay this is uh, where the customer will be redirected uh, when he is blocked so let's call it uh, let's call it uh, redirect dot uh, dot com uh, you can put anything there basically I, I recommend to put there anything that does not exist because the resolver will take care of the redirection yeah but uh, just uh, don't uh, I, I don't recommend to put any any existing domain there uh, by default the angli the English uh, the English variant is uh, is created and there are four flavors if I click the security one uh, I can also shoot show the preview it will it would pop up in a different window so so it wouldn't, wouldn't be shared but you can you can click it yourself and the the code, the code is here. Yeah. I I understand it's not uh, you need someone uh, who would be able to code something and adjust it. If you only want to do something very simple, you can click this uh, magic wand and uh, you can replace the content with. Uh, with the template that will be populated by this sort of this, this sort of information yeah so i can choose a logo i can choose some contact information and i can choose some text that that will be displayed uh in case a regular regulatory blocking uh, legal blocking is uh, emerges and and the default website the default blocking page will be populated with uh, with with this data it's quite quite easy However, it may not look like you would like it to, uh, to look like. So in that case, my recommendation is either just delete this and replace it with something you would like to, you would like to use uh, or take this elsewhere, take this in, in some HTML editor uh, and start, start editing uh, on your own. Give it to someone at least a bit experienced who will be able to move the things around. And these buttons, these at the moment they are green. They are checking whether the the page actually contains all the recommended uh, components. Yeah, if if there is, for example, a back button, if there are contact details, if there is a bypass button uh, in the security, if there is some loading progress bar, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And if I if I remove it. It will tell me, hey, this particular blocking page does not contain any of those optional features. Uh, if you want to, to use the optional features, there is actually a, a help for the coder that can give the coder information how this recommendation can be followed and what does it do actually. Yeah, so, so if you, for example, want to have a bypass button, there is a description that it's a button that will allow the user to click um, i want to continue anyway and will uh, be led to the to the destination domain and this is what is the requirement there there has to be a visible element with some id bypass button and some uh, href uh, with the, with this particular url because we are then working with that and actually integrating that with the uh, with the resolver and this is the usage example so it, it should be quite enough uh, for for anyone with a minor experience with, with coding websites to put everything together and and then you can basically clone it to to all the others maybe just changing the text of the blacklist 
regulatory and and content uh, should you should you have more uh i don't know uh, more uh, more clones uh, from uh, language perspective you can just add more uh, you can just use the the same code with another wording and one of the uh, localizations will be the default one that, that's the first one on the leftmost this is the english one if you want to to have the spanish one as, as a default you just click uh, this button and it, it will be it will move to the left and it's it's now the default one so yeah you will need the coder uh, we will only uh, if you want really custom experience we will only populate the, the main attributes and the logo in the default template with the using the magic wand yes thank you there is no other question so um, that's probably all for uh, today so thank you everyone for your attention thank you for uh, for the presenting uh, new features and uh, have a nice uh, day thank, thank you guys. thank you bye bye